former high school teacher um, for the last 12 years of my career here in town at Port Perry High School and uh, very much uh, part of um, we're very much enjoying being part of uh, Scugog Arts and part of this uh, art community, which is very supportive and uh, and a great place to be. I've been painting for, I'm not sure, maybe 45, 48 years, something like that. Um, but uh, abstraction has always been a major interest of mine ever since I was young. And uh, so I've continued to uh, fulfill that, um, Since, especially since I was able to retire from teaching. I kind of picked up where I left off um, during the time that I was teaching, especially the last uh, few years when I taught senior level English. Um, there wasn't as much time to paint as there is now, so it's uh, one of the great things that uh, about uh, my stage of life is that I get to paint every day, which is great. Um, I was just thinking Graham Coftry was an instructor at the Ontario College of Art, or what's now OCAD U, and somebody asked him once what his best painting was, and he said the next one. Um, and it's a little bit like that for me always. Um, I'm very excited about uh, uh, what's coming next and uh, what I'm learning as I go along in the process. My work tends to go back and forth between stuff which is organically based, biomorphic, anthropomorphic forms, and also things that are like um, old structures, bits of architectural fragment, um, things that maybe look like old texts or old bits of, uh, of uh, parchment text, that sort of thing. So um, one of the things that's happened in my work over the last few years is that um, both of those things, the organic shapes and also the uh, more minimal kinds of, of things that are heavily textured have kind of started to come together in, in the work that I'm doing. So the stuff that I've got in here at the moment is is often a combination of both of those things at once so um, that's uh, kind of what I do I'm looking at uh, where we are I guess the imagery comes out of its personal imagery obviously but it comes out of um, trying to get a handle for myself around where we are at this rather complicated moment in human history and uh, and figure out uh, kind of a way of responding to it so that's what I'm doing I think in my work Palettes change, but uh, the uh, approach to it is often fairly consistent. Because I come out of a particular tradition, which is, um, one would have said, uh, um, the kind of abstract painting that started in, in uh, North America, especially after the Second World War, um, I don't, and comes out of surrealism before that, etc. cetera, um, I don't pre-plan what I'm doing. I start with a basic idea and then the process begins and I don't really know where it's going to go and uh, until it kind of uh, reveals itself to me. So that's always a challenge and that's one of the interesting, um, passionate, engaging things about, about painting for me anyway, has been always. So uh, that's always a challenge. You, know, you never quite know whether the thing's going to work or not and sometimes it, uh, it does and sometimes you get very close to the edge and then realize it isn't going to work and you know there's all of that so it's uh, it's kind of an interesting process and, a, and certainly a very engaging one for me. I have the luxury of time and I have the privilege of my particular place in society at this point which I'm very aware of as many other people are not um, but uh, you know I as much as is possible to keep working at it to uh, continue to push through those areas and those times and those occasions when things are not easy for you, um, etc. I think it's also, I'm pretty old fashioned in some ways. I, I like to draw a lot. I think that's really helpful, uh, whether it's drawing from life or, or, or otherwise, but I think it's really important to, uh, to continue to practice the craft. Uh, however, it reveals itself for you, you know, whether you're somebody involved in, in digital making at this point or whatever it happens to be, I think pushing it through to see where it's going to go is, is a really important aspect. Uh, work on it as much as, as you have time to do in your life. A very wise person once told my other half um, at a point when, uh, when she was working a lot of hours doing a job in education that um, carving out 10 minutes a day was really important and that she use that 10 minutes a day to uh, to continue on into the kind of work that she does now as a writer. So I think it's important just to, you know, whatever time and whatever um, amount of ability that you have just to keep working on it. So this particular piece is, is one that is uh, perhaps more based on some of the architectural elements that, uh, than some of the others. There are um, other ones around the gallery that are a combination 
with more of the organic shapes, but it, um, to me, um, comes out of looking at, uh, I'm always fascinated by curatorial practice. Um, I'll go into a museum um, in North America, maybe, or maybe in Europe, and um, um, I, I said the other night, I was, I was talking to a group, and I, I said that I love the Aga Khan Museum in, in, uh, in Toronto, because one of the things I love about the Aga Khan Museum is I see um, work that is quite ancient in many respects, that comes out of traditions I understand that is not, but that are not my tradition. So looking at stuff um, from a, I, one of the things I did at, at a, the undergrad level was medieval art, looking at illuminated manuscripts, for instance, that, that were, um, that are like Byzantine art, but different because they come out of the Islamic tradition was fascinating to me, you know, that sort of thing. So this kind of a piece, um, is like looking at curatorial practice and oftentimes if you go into a museum you will see an artifact and they will have in the case or display or something drawn out where the rest of it might have been if it still was in existence and I find that fascinating so it's it's like remnants of, of bits of stuff that um, are part of our cultural history um, and I try and get with the piece like this a sense of patina and age and um, that sort of thing about it and you you know are uh, pushing your own imagination and your own thinking to kind of fill in the, gra the gaps of bits and pieces that uh, that you might see there but that aren't there at the moment so um, so that you can sort of make it a whole piece in your own mind. I like one of the things I always have loved about abstraction and this has been so ever since I was young was was the fact that um, the viewer brings to it whatever their own experience is and however their life has unfolded and uh, and brings that into however they capture things. So I'm hoping that it has a sense for me of that kind of patina, but it's it's obviously up to the viewer for what else they may, you know, bring to it. So I'd love people to come in and see what we do in this in this particularly very in this particular very supportive arts community. I think uh, um, if uh, people have a chance to do that, um, um, we'd uh, certainly encourage them to uh, to have a look. Excellent. Thank you so much, Michael. Oh, thank you.